Welcome back to the program. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Nigeria, INEC, has released the timetable for the 2019 general elections. While the presidential election will hold on February 16th, 2019, the governorship and state house of assembly elections will hold on March 2nd. Uh, just recently, former president Olusha Gombasanjo wrote an open letter, a statement, they say it is, to the president and call for a formation of a group called Coalition of Nigeria. The call for the younger generation becomes imperative at a time like this. But then, what do we look out for when choosing the next set of leaders in 2019? We're going to be talking all about that on the program just now. And joining me is a public affairs analyst, a leadership and communication expert as well, Abiola Salami. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on you for having me. Network Africa. Thank you. So, you know, we know all about, you know, elections are coming up, everything is this, uh, people are wooing voters already, and we see, you know, the old people are showing interest mm. in doing this. But then there's a call for, you know, generational shift for you know, people to lead Nigeria. Mm. So what should voters look out for, okay. you know, in choosing the next set of leaders, leaders. Uh, putting into consideration a lot of people that we see are coming out to say they want to contest next year? Okay, um, great question. And it's a good thing that uh, we're thinking of uh, engaging younger people because of the energy is a good thing, because of the demography as well. I mean, Nigeria, the, the average age is 17.2 years, you know. So it's good that um, the conversation about who to contest is, is coming down into young people. But in addition to looking at age, age is not the only criteria we should look at. Uh, there are a number of other things that we should consider. And that is, one, competence. So whichever young person that that we're thinking of that people want to elect into office, how competent is this individual? So we need to look at competence, we need to look at character. Character is the place of integrity, you know, because to manage office effectively, to govern a people effectively, it's important to have a good sense of character. The other thing to look at is compassion. Somebody that will really care about the people, not just putting the focus of leadership and the gains of the office for himself, but using it to actually improve the lives of people. So our GDP is X now, and by the time the president is in leadership, after a few years, it moves into X plus something positive. You know, we talk about poverty level now, there is an improvement, there should be an improvement in that. We talk about unemployment rate, there should be an improvement in that. So we're looking for people, we should be looking for people. One, young people, yes, but not just young, you know, uh, because young could be an illusion. Young, competent, um, also has a good sense of character. Um, also, the person is compassionate and has the courage to make certain changes happen. Right, how do we get this such, you know, glamorous idea of a person that, you know, we want to be in power? How do we get the person, you know, up to this, to this you know, level? Okay. Because... It's, it's one thing for the voters to choose the person mm -hmm. that they want to elect as president or governor or uh, the National Assembly representatives. It's another thing for the political parties that are on ground already to encourage young people. So where do we start from? Mm. in you know getting th these crop of leaders this, this into power person. yes um, since the conversation now is about young people uh, what political parties need to do is to pay attention to these things not just because the young person is popular but because the young person is making a difference and i think it's easy to get these young people so whatever portfolio you have at the moment the young person has at the moment how's this person managing it so the person doesn't necessarily have to be in politics already and the person may be in politics already but there's certain attributes there's certain traits that we should look out for and what a political party wants to do is to use this to even build credibility you know every now and then parties get into finger pointing blaming each other for the woes of the nation but what what Parties should do right now is to project young person, a young person that is competent, that is that is um, compassionate, that has a character that is courageous to make certain changes, positive changes now to happen, so that the political party will not lose credibility with the people. So political parties should be thinking of not just this election; should be thinking about ten years, twenty years time that they still want to remain in power, not just for themselves, but in adding value to people. So look for those young people. They are in this Nigeria. From what you've, you know, observed, I mean, being a leadership expert, you will, I'm sure you will have sat down to, you know, listen to all these people. Do you think, you know, the political parties as they're presently constituted 
are ready for this change. Mm. Let's take a look at the, you know, the big parties, the, big the, the, parties. the, the two, the two and then the parties. other ones that are, you know, we think are top parties. Okay, to a, to a large extent, uh, there seems to be some lip service paid to this, you know, to a large extent. That is just something that's been said. Yes, the National Assembly uh, proved um, not too young to rule, you know, but there's still some level of lip service being paid to this. But we need to start to take practical steps, even in the party structure itself, you know. And so the, the, the senior generation need to start to play the role of consultants and to sit back and advise. So so even in the party structure, we need to start to see young people who the national publicity secretary, you know, uh, the, the chairperson for, for, the, for, for, for the political parties, the BO, the board of trustees can be with the senior people. But the people actively involved in doing things should be the younger people. Running so it starts things. from the structure of the party into now elective post. You cannot have senior people being in the structure of the political party and expect that younger people will run for office. Thank you so much for your thoughts on Thank this. You. Abiola Salami, a leadership and communication expert, talking to us on the leadership, the business of leadership. Let me put it that way. Thank you for your time. Thank on the you program. for having me. Well, at least uh, 14,000 primary and junior secondary school pupils in Benway State are at risk of remaining out of school in the state. Now, this follows an attack by suspected herdsmen which has forced over 90,000 internally displaced persons to seek shelter in five public schools in the state since January 2018. Well, youths in Somalia are being encouraged to develop solutions for tackling the many problems facing internally displaced persons as well in their country. Uh, the federal government of Somalia, in conjunction with the UN agencies, launched an innovation challenge initiative uh, that seeks creative ideas from young Somalis on improving the living conditions of IDPs. Young innovators from Somalia present their ideas on economically empowering the country's large population of internally displaced people, IDP. At an event organized by the federal government and United Nations agencies, the Innovation Challenge Initiative seeks ideas from young Somalis on improving the living conditions of IDPs. Their business ideas could win them startup funding and the most viable solutions for improving the living conditions and livelihood of IDPs will be supported through entrepreneurship training, incubation, and access to finance. We really don't want dependent on humanitarian. And this is the way, uh, this is the way out. This is the way people could be resilient. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I think, something that we can really look into it. The innovators engaged senior officials from the United Nations Development Program, the United Nations Human Settlements Program, and the World Bank. You are the best hope that something will be different tomorrow and you know we write a lot of reports we do a lot of emergency support but what we love the most is to work with people like you because if we can succeed with you to help you to the next level you will take Somalia to its next level Somalia has been in a state of civil war since 1991 the country now has an internationally backed government supported by African peacekeepers battling Islamic militants which continue to launch deadly attacks targeting the government and security forces. That's Network Africa. Thank you for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.